Noelle, oh my God, you're so windswept. Wow, how are you doing this with the window closed? Wow, are you just naturally that beautiful? Wow, no, um, the fan is going. <laughs> and also I have my trusty ice bag pack because you guys, it is a hundred degrees in California and it's that like heavy heat, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like that, Oh God, what am I gonna do, Heat? Today's video is going to be my favorite audiobooks thus far in life. Um, and I say thus far because I love audiobooks, so this is just a simple sample of my favorite audiobooks. I will continue to read audiobooks, and I have read many more than what I'll mention in this video, but these are just some of my favorites. But before we start, I actually just wanted to have a brief conversation about audiobooks, because I've gotten many comments on this channel telling me that I'm cheating when I read an audiobook, <laughs> or that it's not real reading, or you didn't actually read the book, or like, that doesn't count. And let me just say this real quick. If you have a problem with audiobooks, this is not, first of all, the video for you. I don't know why you clicked on it. But second of all, it's not the channel for you because I will ride or die for audiobooks forever. I think they are incredible. I think that they are such an enjoyable way to consume literature. And I also think that it makes reading so much more accessible to people, right? Like. Audiobooks are great for anyone, but especially people who literally don't have the time. Maybe they're like working parents who like don't have the time for hours of reading at the end of the day. So instead they like listening to audiobooks. I think it also makes books more accessible to people who literally can't buy books, right? Maybe they just don't have the budget for books, but they might have a library card that helps them get into a library database that helps them get a free audiobook, right? So like it makes it more accessible that way. And it also makes reading more accessible for those who physically can't read a book, right? They can listen to a book fine, but they can't physically read the book. And so I think to try to police what is and isn't real reading is such a waste of time. <laughs> like it's so lame. I understand if you don't like audiobooks, like maybe you yourself, just that's not your favorite thing to do. But I think to tell people, hey, you're wrong and I'm right is so weird, <laughs> especially when it comes to reading. It's like, why? Why are we even having this conversation? It's fine. If you don't like the audiobooks, that's fine, but I love them. And at the end of the day, we still consumed the same story, no matter which way we did it, right? Because at the end of the day, my reading experience did not hurt your reading experience. The way you consumed the story does not change because of the way that I consumed the story. So with all that being said, audiobooks are awesome. And I'll stand by that till the day I die. And actually, you know what? Just engrave that on my tomb. Anyway, Let's get into this actual recommendation video because honey, I've got a list, over 20 books on this list. So let's just snap to it and let's do this thing. We're gonna start this recommendation video with thrillers slash horror. Now I have four on this list. Maybe it'll be more by the end of this conversation, um, but let's start. Um, the first one, and I have talked about this a million times on this channel, so I, not even gonna waste your time, but Pet Cemetery by Stephen King as an audiobook is exceptional. It's narrated by Michael C. Hall, who does, who plays Dexter in the show Dexter. So it's like hella creepy. And he like really dedicates himself to Lewis Creed. Um, and it's just awesome. Like it's such a good audiobook and it really <laughs> creeped me out. Um, so hearing Dexter's voice read a scary story to me, was scary. It was awesome. So definitely suggest Pet Cemetery. I think it's so, so good in the audiobook version. The next one is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I think this might've been one of the first audiobooks that I that I read where I was like, oh, oh my God, that was an experience. You know what I'm saying? Like I just went on a murder mystery and I helped solve it, honey. It's such a good story. It's basically about a teenage girl who's been abducted. And so you're trying to figure out who's abducted her and if she's still even alive, like, is she okay by the end of the book? And it's really cool because each part of the audiobook is told from different narrators. Um, and in Then She Was Gone, there was an Irish woman named Noelle who speaks, like who reads her chapter with a thick Irish accent. And it's just everything I've ever wanted. Um, and I also just really enjoyed the mystery. I thought it was so good. So the reading or the listening experience is awesome. And the actual story is so cool. So definitely recommend. The next book, 
<laughs> is I'm thinking of ending things and um, whoa, <laughs> this audiobook was so good. It was so good. It creeped me out genuinely, like to my core. Already, I really, really liked the book. It was already creepy. But when you had someone kind of bringing the eeriness to life, oh, truly can't recommend it enough. I had so much fun listening to that audiobook. So really recommend I'm Thinking of Ending Things. If you don't know what it's about, it's basically a woman and a man are dating and they go to visit his family and it's really weird. <laughs> the family is really weird. Kind of reminds me of The Visit. If you've ever seen the movie The Visit with the creepy grandparents, it reminds me of that. Um, very stale, very awkward, very creepy and kind of skittish. That's how it kind of feels. Um, and then after they've met the parents, they then, I don't even know if I should say, then they, um, you know, I won't say anything else. They meet the parents and then the story continues and it just gets even weirder. And it's like a weird creepy where by the end of it, you're like, oh my God, <laughs> what just happened? Um, and I think that the narrator really brought the story to life in a very eerie way. So highly recommend that audiobook. The next book is The Whisper Man. And oh my God, what a good thriller. I, first of all, love the cover of this book. <laughs> like I am all for it. Like kind of like moth, handprint, the white and the black and the yellow. I just love this cover so much. Why am I telling you this? I don't know. Um, but the story was so good. It's basically about this father and son who have recently lost the mother of the family. And so they remove themselves from the town where like the mother was alive, right? So it was like the three of them and then the mom dies and then they're like, okay, well, let's move out. And the town that they moved to just had another little boy, the same age as the son who was just abducted. So they're coming to this town with like no knowledge at all. And little do they know another kid had been abducted at the same age as our current son. Does this make sense? So you're reading about a little boy that you know personally in a town where he is obviously a threat, right? Like he is threatened by something in the town. Um, and so the whole book, you are watching this father-son dynamic of like mourning and grieving over the lost wife slash mother, um, and also trying to solve this mystery of like this little kid that was just abducted while also being so scared that your current little boy is going to get abducted. And it was just so good. I really enjoyed it. I loved the ending. I thought the way everything fell together was super good. And honestly, I did not see the ending coming. Like the twist really got me at least. Um, I loved it so much. I just thought it was such a good thriller. Um, and it really is truly thrilling. Like there's a moment where someone is like sneaking in the shadows and I literally felt myself wanting to run because I wanted to get away so bad. So I really recommend The Whisper Man. And again, the audiobook was awesome. So highly recommend. Okay, now we're gonna move on to romance because I mean, I love romance audiobooks. They are like my new favorite way to pass the time. It's actually been like the last month. It's my favorite thing to listen to a romance while I do a puzzle because yes, I am 55. So I just, you know, that's what's going on. So my favorite romances on audiobooks. First, I gotta say this, Call Me By Your Name and Find Me, both by Andre Asimon. Um, Call Me By Your Name is narrated by Army Hammer who plays Oliver in the movie Call Me by your name. And then Find Me is narrated by Elio's father in the movie, whose name is Michael Stuhlbar. Stuhlbarg? I don't know. One of the two, but he's the father in that movie who everyone loves and he narrates Find Me. So it's very cool having these two very prominent actors in the film narrate the respective books. Really enjoyed it, really loved it. The next book I'd like to recommend on audiobook is The Bride Test, which is the second book in the Kiss Quotient series. So I didn't listen to the Kiss Quotient, so I can't like in good conscience recommend it as an audiobook, although I'm sure it is fantastic um, because it has a different narrator for The Bride Test. But the narrator for The Bride Test Honey, she had a hot ass voice. <laughs> um, and for a romance, oh, nonetheless, a steamy romance, that was very cool. The Bride Test, what is it about? Well, there is a guy named Kai, who is an autistic man who lives in California, like Silicon Valley. And his mother is in Vietnam trying to find him a wife because he's never been romantically interested in anyone because he doesn't think he knows how to love. He thinks that he, he doesn't have the cap capability to love. So. 
he decides that, or so the mom decides, I'm going to go find him a woman in Vietnam and I'm going to bring her over and they're going to fall in love and they're going to get married. And so um, she finds a woman named Ismay and Ismay comes to the United States to try to like woo Kai because um, she isn't told the full story. And so she comes to the United States and um, she's trying to make a better life for her and her daughter. And so she meets Kai and then you watch love blossom and it's seriously so beautiful so really highly recommend the bride test and again the narrator's voice was so hot so again highly recommend the next book <laughs> i won't shut up about this book and i literally never will like i never want to stop talking about this book because it's one of my new favorites i already have the tattoo planned out i don't know where it's going but i know it's going to happen and it is the hating game and oh my god i loved this book um, but basically the hating game is this <laughs> amazing romance where you just fall in love with the characters. Like I loved the characters so much. It was such a sweet novel. I, did I say this already? I loved it. So the basic plot for the hating game is that there's this guy and this girl and they come from two very different publishing companies. Um, like one is like big brand and super serious and just about the sales. And then the other one is like this kind of sweet, cute, quirky publishing company. Um, and then the two of them come together, like these big publishing houses come together. And there's this guy from one and this girl from the other, and they have to like share an office. And so um, they are like polar opposites. And because they're so different, they don't seem to get along. Um, the girl genuinely thinks that the guy hates her. And so she kind of plays this mental game with him every day called the hating game, where they basically just hate each other all day, every day. And they want this like big promotion and they're fighting for it. And they're like really snippy with each other. And then through the book, Guys, I won't spoil anything, but it's my favorite for a reason. Okay, I just loved it so much. It's really, really sweet. So, and the audiobook is phenomenal. I think that the narrator does such a good job. It's one of those voices where you're like, can you just make a podcast so I can like listen to you all the time? Because I really, really loved her narrating. Um, but yeah, The Hating Game is fantastic and I highly recommend it. Okay, now we're gonna move on to general fiction, okay? General fiction, and boy, oh boy, is it general. We're gonna start with The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. Good God Almighty, this, I feel like my life, there, my life is split into two. It's before The Vanishing Half and after The Vanishing Half. So The Vanishing Half, I mean, I feel like everyone on the internet has talked about this, Lord knows I have. <laughs> Um, but The Vanishing Half basically is about these two identical twins and how one of them, they, they kind of split off in their lives. One of them decides to go live their life as a white passing woman in society. And the other one decides to go live their life as a black woman in society. And you see how their lives splinter off and all of the hardships and heartaches that each of them live, like experience individually and how that affects their life overall. Um, and so it's just, it's wonderful. I think it's such a good book. Uh, it's just, it's an excellent story. There's so much representation. I think that the whole exploration of like identical twins and how they've severed off um, and how their privileges and lives have molded around their decisions as young girls have like really morphed their lives into something else is wonderful. But I also think that the narrator does a fantastic job in the audiobook. So highly recommend. Next up, we have Ready Player One by Ernest Klein. <laughs> oh my God. I can't tell you how much I love this audiobook. It's seriously, the narrator is phenomenal and the story is action front to front to back, front to back. That was interesting. What are we saying? So I'm gonna botch the description because just so much happens in the book that it's hard to say like, <laughs> Well, then this happens and this happens and this happens. And I'm not trying to make this video way longer than it needs to be. But basically, there's this guy named Wade Watts. He's our main protagonist. And there's this place called the Oasis. And it's basically like where it's like virtual reality. You can go like it's kind of a dystopian future that this book is taking place in. So you can escape to the Oasis, which is a virtual world. And it's an incredible virtual world. And it was created by this guy named Steve Halliday. So when Steve Halliday dies, he basically says, hey, if you want to inherit the Oasis and see like, and say what happens to it in the future, what you need to do is win my, like the Halliday egg hunt. 
Is it called the egg hunt? I don't know. Um, but it's basically like there's three main challenges and you need to solve the challenges or beat the challenges. And then it's like riddles and challenges all in one. So you need to like solve the riddle that gets you to the challenge. Then once you beat the challenge, you get a key that unlocks the next riddle that gets you to the next challenge. Like it's this whole thing. And it's seriously an adventure from page one to page end. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how many pages it is, um, but it's seriously go so, so good. And the second book, Ready Player Two, oh my God, is coming out in November. And I, <laughs> I don't know who I have to bribe to get an early copy, but I will find out and I will do that because I loved Ready Player One so much. It's seriously one of my favorite books of all time. Really can't recommend it enough. And there you have it. <laughs> The next book I need to recommend is either Beloved by Toni Morrison or The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison. Both are very, very heavy books, but each of the audiobooks are narrated by Toni Morrison. And she, I mean, she wrote the books. So like she knows how she meant for the characters to like live and breathe and speak. Um, but she brings her story to life in a very gentle, almost caressing way. I can't even describe it until you've experienced it, but it's seriously so good. The way she narrates her own stories, truly gorgeous, like just simply stunning. I loved it so, so much. Um, she almost gets like breathy at certain points and like she really like uses her, just like, it's like she expertly wields her voice. Like, I don't even know how to say this, but she does such a good job. And so I highly, highly, highly recommend checking out either The Bluest Eye or Beloved by Toni Morrison or any others. Those are just the two that I've read so far and both had her narrating the books. So highly recommend. Okay, <laughs> it's getting really dark in this room. I'm so sorry that we're getting like weird, like summer camp, I'm telling you a scary story vibes right now. Um, but we have two more sections and I'm gonna try to get through these fairly quickly. Um, the first section is memoirs. Now, all of these that I will mention are read by the respective author. Um, so the first one is Becoming by Michelle Obama, and it's read by Michelle Obama, as well as all, the other, all of these other ones. They're not all read by Michelle Obama. What I'm saying is that the author is the one that narrates them. Okay, so Becoming by Michelle Obama. I gave this a five out of five. I would give it a 10 out of five. I really think it is such a treasure. It's so good. And so many people told me to read it. And I was just like, I don't really want to read a political memoir. Not really my thing. No, all I was doing was hurting myself because it's seriously so good. And so many people recommend it because it is so good. So I really, really highly recommend reading Becoming by Michelle Obama. Next is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. I just read this literally like four days ago and it was incredible. It is hilarious. It is moving. It is tragic. It is devastating. It is hopeful. It is everything. It is just so good. I actually didn't know a lot about Trevor Noah before this book, but we read it for my grad school, like friends book club. And I'm so glad we did. Um, and it's obviously narrated by Trevor Noah and he just brings it to life in such an amazing way. And I loved it. So really highly recommend Born a Crime. Next, we have On Writing by Stephen King. This is amazing because like the first third of it is kind of like a memoir of Stephen King's life and like his relation to writing, like his first stories and the first book he publishes and like all his rejection slips, all of that. And then the second two thirds is kind of like his advice on writing through his own trials and tribulations. So you learn how to be a better writer through him saying like, hey, here's how I messed up or here's how I found success. So here's what I suggest. And I just love it so much. I've read it twice already and I just think it's excellent. So highly recommend. And then lastly, we have Dear Girls by Ali Wong. Oh my God, this one was good. It's obvious, <laughs> I need to stop saying this, but it's narrated by Ali Wong. Um, and it's so, so, so good. Um, it's, you know, it's all about her life and how she also rose in comedy, uh, but she grew up in the Bay Area. So it was really fun to read because I knew a lot of the places that she was referencing. It's supposed to be letters to her daughters so that like, if anything ever happened to her, they could like go read this book and like learn about their mom in a really intimate and funny way. And it's just, it's really, really good. So highly recommend. Okay, so this last section is my self-help slash like education um, books recommendations. I don't know what I'm saying. Uh, basically, here are some like self-help type books. So the first one is, so you want to talk about race and this is more educational and oh my God, it is so valuable. It is so good. 
it obviously like every single chapter is divided into another lesson. So there's like a whole chapter on the school to prison pipeline. There's a whole chapter on white privilege. There's a whole chapter on um, cultural appropriation. So every chapter is separated, but she also at the beginning of every chapter, she kind of tells her own story in relation to the subject. So you kind of have like this personal connection because you're like, you really like the author. And so you're listening to her tell her story. And then she brings it into an actual like really good lesson and she's teaching you something. Um, and it's just, it's really fantastic. I think it's like required reading, honestly. I really, really loved it. And I learned so much. I learned so much from this book. So again, as I've said a million times, highly recommend. <laughs> Okay, the next book is How to Have Impossible Conversations. This one was really cool because it's based, it's, it's a very, I feel like it's an unbiased book because it's not saying like Democrat versus Republican. Instead, it's like, hey, Democrats and Republicans are gonna have arguments. And if you wanna have productive arguments and productive conversation that can actually change minds and influence people's emotions, here's how you do that. So it's really unbiased, which I think was cool because I think it makes it more accessible to so many people. It's not just about politics, it's about a whole range of things, but it's basically like, I'm not picking a side, I'm just telling you here are two sides and here's how one side can really listen to the other side and how they can approach the other side and and I really appreciated that. Um, yeah, I just thought it was great. So yeah. <laughs> and then the final book is Atomic Habits. Now I talked about this in my July wrap up and I can't tell you how valuable this book is, especially during the pandemic. Um, it's all about like forming really healthy habits and how to stick to them. It's not about like setting overall, like, hey, I wanna lose 10 pounds. It's about setting the habits that will get you there so that once you get there, you don't completely lose those habits, right? So it's all about like the importance of habits, how to stick to them, um, how to like get your mind to accept a new habit because they're hard to adapt. And so how to get your own mind to like be down with the new habit. It's awesome, but it's especially good right now in the pandemic because I know I have so many bad habits that have developed during the pandemic. And I think that this book was really good at saying like, hey, let's find those bad habits and let's fix them. Um, which is just, I thought it was so valuable, but the audiobook is superb and I just loved it so much. All right, everyone, that's it. That is my huge list of recommendations. Um, I really hope you liked it. And I really hope that you found a good recommendation from this video and that you went out and you listened to it. If you did, let me know which one it was. And if you liked it. And also, if you have any other audiobooks that you think are particularly fantastic, please let me know. I have heard that Daisy Jones and the Six is a really good audiobook. So that's definitely on my list. I just haven't gotten to it yet. But also let me know if you'd like more audiobook videos, because I can make this like a quarterly thing. That's how much I love audiobooks. Like every few months I could be like, hey guys, here are my current favorite audiobooks. Um, so let me know if that's something you'd like, um, because I'll do it. <laughs> Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope to see you in the next one. Bye!